Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today's problem I got from one of my subscribers from India and he has a problem. Two varieties of maize averaging 48 and 72 inches in height respectively are crossed. The F1 progenic white uniform averaging 60 inches in height of uh, the 500 F2 plants. The shorters two are 48 inches and tallest are 72 inches. What is the probable number of polygenes involved in this trait? And here is the variance of the answers. As usual, I recommend you to pause video here, try to solve this problem on your own first, and when you would be ready, you can run video again and you can compare your answer with my answer and explanation. This problem is about additive traits, so how we are going to solve this problem. Let me start with the simplest example. Let's say we have only one gene and two allele. So we have one gene A and two allele. Dominant allele A and recessive allele A. If we cross two such parents, what we are going to get in the F1 generation. Take a look. Again, because this is additive trait, how many genotypes we are going to have here? We are going to have here three genotypes and three phenotypes. Not two phenotypes, but three. So let's say, for example, dominant allele would add to the trait 10 centimeters and recessive allele would add 5 centimeters. So 10 centimeters and 5 centimeters. This is what we call additive trait. And here is the genotypes, capital A, capital A, capital A, small a, capital A, small a, and small a, small a genotype. How many phenotypes we have here? Take a look. 10 centimeters plus 10 centimeters, 20 centimeters, 10 and 5 here, 10 and 5 here, and 5 and 5 centimeters here. So we have 20 centimeters, this is one phenotype, we have 15 centimeters, this is second phenotype, and we also have 10 centimeters, this is going to be third phenotype. So now you have um, understanding what additive trait is. Sometimes we can say that dominant allele would add uh, 10 centimeters and recessive allele can be actually defective allele and wouldn't add anything to the trait. But you have an idea. So today we have one parent which is 48 inches and another parent that is 72 inches and the progeny F1 generation 60 inches. So, for example, take a look. We cross uh, one parent that is 48 centimeters tall with another which is 72 centimeters tall. So, basically, what we are going to do, let's add these two numbers. So, 48 plus 72 and divide by 2. And we are going to get 60 inches. This is what we got in F1 generation. Exactly what we see here. Again, pay attention to this Punnett square. If we cross parent that is homozygous recessive and 10 centimeters tall with another parent that is 20 centimeters tall, all the progeny are going to be uniform and going to be intermediate phenotype between parental uh, phenotypes and going to be 15 centimeters tall, which is uh, about the mean of these parents. So this is also what we see here. We just uh, add a height of the parents and divide by two, and we got F1 generation. Basically, that means that one parent have to be, for example, capital A, capital A, capital B, capital B, and another parent have to be small a, small a, and small b, small b. And the progeny or F1 generation is going to be average of uh, both parents. So parent 1, parent 2, and F1 generation is going to be capital A, small a, capital B, small b. And of course it's going to be intermediate between these two parents. And this is what we see here in our example. But how many genes control the trait? Whether it is only one gene with two alleles or 
two genes. Let's now find out. But let's return to our first example. So we have here one parent that is heterozygous, another parent that is heterozygous. So let's say the first cross was between parent that is capital A, capital A and small a, small a. This is how we got F1 generation, which is capital A, small a, and we cross with this generation with itself. And this is what we see here. So take a look, one gene with two alleles is going to give us um, square which is going to be two by two and which result in three genotypes. So genotypes. So let's say that this is model with one gene. But what if we will have two genes? Gene A and B, we cross such two parents, we got intermediate generation, F1 generation, which we cross with itself. So we cross with itself or self cross. And this is how we are going to get F2 generation, where trait is going to be uh, segregated. So some genotypes can be capital A, capital A, some can be capital A, small a, capital B, capital B, capital B, small b, small b, small b, and so on. So many different variants are possible in uh, F2 generation. So according to the same logic with two genes, so two genes, we are going to get how many uh, different variants of the gametes. Take a look. If in our first example, this is gamete and this is gamete. So let's say one parent produce sperm. So this is two variants of the sperm. And another parent produce egg cell. So two variants of the egg cell. Here we are going to have first variant of the gamete, which is going to be capital A, capital B, capital A, capital B. Another variant would be capital A, small b. So capital A, small b. Another variant would be small a, capital B. So small a, capital B. And the last variant would be small a and small b. So small a, small b. So this would give us uh, 16 variants. So again, four by four. Square is going to be four by four. And uh, here we are going to have four alleles. Dominant allele A, dominant allele B, recessive allele A and recessive allele B. So four alleles, four alleles. And we also going to have 16 cells here. Four by four square is going to give us 16 cells. And if here we had two extreme uh, genotypes and phenotypes, which account for one quarter extremely big and one quarter extremely small. So if we build a square, which is going to be four by four and is going to have 16 cells, we expect that one sixteenth, one sixteenth is going to be extremely large and one sixteen is going to be extremely small and everything in between is going to be intermediate uh, genotypes, different intermediate genotypes. One more time, if it is not clear for you, if you build a square, which is going to be four by four with 16 cells, only in one cell, we are going to get genotypes that is going to be capital A, capital A, and capital B, capital B. So one sixteenth, one out of the 16 cells is going to be this genotype. And one out of the 16 cells, we are going to get genotypes that is going to be small a, small a, and small b, small b also one sixteenth. 
And if we will have three genes, so three genes, three model. Now let's follow the logic. How many uh, gametes we are going to have? Take a look. Two genes gave us four gametes. Again, uh, it can be with a sperm cell or egg cell, but four different variants. And uh, this time we are going to get, instead of four, eight variants. So eight variants. S uh, variants will double. If here we had two, then here we um, move to four variants of the gametes from two alleles, two gametes, to four alleles and four gametes. And here we are going to double number of gametes, which is going to be eight. That means our square is going to be eight by eight. And it's going to be 64 cells. Again, extreme uh, genotypes is going to be uh, one out of 64. For example, this is going to be genotype that is going to be capital A, capital A, capital B, capital B, and capital C, capital C. And one out of 64 cells is going to be another extreme phenotype. So one out of 64, that is going to be small a, small a, small b, small b, and small c, small c. So uh, this, again, going to be three genes would produce eight alleles. So eight, um, actually alleles and eight gametes. So eight gametes. And would produce a square eight by eight with 64 cells. Now let's think about model with uh, four genes. So four genes. And we are going to have, instead of eight by eight, we are going to have 16 by 16 square. So 16 by 16. And this gives us 256 cells. And also this tells us that we are going to have one out of 250 six extreme genotype, which is going to be capital A, capital A, capital B, capital B, capital C, capital C, and capital D, capital D. And one out of 256 cells is going to be extremely small uh, genotype and phenotype, small a, small a, small b, small b, small c, small c, and small d, small d. Now, Let's uh, return to our problem and let's take a second look at our problem. We are told that uh, out of 500 F2 plants, the shortest two are 48 inches. Let me underline. Out of 500, the shortest two are 48 inches and tallest 72 inches. Let's take a look. Our parents, the shortest is 48 inches and uh, tallest is also 72 inches. That means that um, genotype of the smallest parent is probably small a, small a, small b, small b, small c, small c, and so on. And the tallest would be small, uh, sorry, capital A, capital A, capital B, capital B. That's why in F2 generation we don't have um, progeny, which is phenotypically more extreme than parental generation. Now, I also want you to pay attention to 500 plants and shortest two. So we have a ratio, take a look, we have a ratio 500 to two. Do you agree with me that we also can reduce this ratio to 250 to one and ratio is going to be the same. We just reduce both sides 
divided by 2. And this is how we got this ratio, which is actually the same as this one. And now let's return to what we got here. And what we got here? We got 1 out of 256 is extremely uh, large. And 1 out of 256 extremely small. So meaning 72 inches and 48 inches. If we divide 48 by 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 alleles, we are going to find that each recessive allele add to the trait 6 inches. So 6 here, 6 here, 6 here, 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 and here. If we add all this, because this is additive trait, if we add all this numbers, this is how we are going to get 48 inches. Now let's find how much to the trait at each dominant allele. So we have 72 divided by 8. So 72 inches is the height of the tallest plant, and tallest plant has 8 alleles. We divide 72 inches by 8 alleles, so divide by 8, and we are going to get 9. So each dominant allele at 9 inches to this trait. So again, if we add all these numbers, we are going to get 72 inches. Now, as you remember, uh, F1 generation, so let's say uh, that this is parent 1, this is parent 2. If we cross this parent 1 and parent 2, which is 72 inches and 48 inches, of course, in the F1 generation, we expect that the progeny is going to be intermediate so going to be, take a look, going to be capital A, small a, capital B, small b, uh, capital C, small c, and capital D, and small d. 9 inches here, 6 here, 9, 6, 9, 6, 9, 6, and we are going to get, so we add all this numbers, this is additive trait, each allele would add something to the trait. And this is how we get 60 inches in the F1 generation. So again, you see uh, this trait is under control of eight alleles. Extreme genotypes and phenotypes is one out of 256 if we have four genes and each gene represented by two alleles. So for example, this is gene A, gene A, gene B, gene C, gene D, and each represented by two alleles. So this is going to be our answer today. This trait is under control of four genes, and each gene has two alleles. And we have found how much each allele add to the trait, how much dominant allele add to the trait, and how much recessive allele add to the trait. Some of you may say that we got uh, extremely small and extremely large as 1 out of 256, but in our problem uh, we got ratio here 1 out of 250 and not 256. Again, this is just approximation. So slight uh, deviation is uh, normal if it is slight. And we got slight deviation from 250. So uh, our answer is correct. Hence, the correct answer is A. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.